2019 DPPE and DJPE and the subject PHE 21. Presenter Mrs. AC Stain and the cell phone number 081 277 Good morning, I am Mrs. Ansi Stain, your tutor for PHE 21 for this year. Welcome to the presentation for this subject. I hope you enjoy your studies and that you will be successful this year. Success comes with dedicated, consistent work. My contact details are 081-277-5321, the cell phone number, and ansistain at hotmail.com, that's my email address. You are welcome to contact me from Mondays till Saturdays from 8 a.m. till 8 p.m. You can either phone me or SMS or email me. In the latter case, I can send you a detailed answer. Please feel free to ask if anything is unclear or if you have problems regarding your subject. I am willing to assist as far as I can. I'm going to discuss the most important facts of each unit separately. You will then be able to follow the content discussed if you page through your study guide while I am discussing the content. Please note that this presentation is not a discussion of any exam paper but of the most important content for the whole year. As an introduction to the study guide, I'm shortly going to explain some information regarding the guide itself. When you page to the front of the study guide, you will find a detailed table of contents. Here you will find the headings of the complete content and you will be able to have an overview of your subject for the year. Take time to read through it, to familiarize yourself with the content you are going to study. On page 7, that is in the DPPE study guide, and 2 in the DJPE study guide, you will find very important information regarding the time you are required to spend with a subject in order to be a successful student. Because this is distant teaching, it is very important that you spend adequate time right throughout the year with your study material. To just start studying before the exams will not be wise and it will be hard to write the exams successfully. I recommend that you spend time every day with your studies, even half an hour every day will be worthwhile. Consistency is the key to being a successful student. When you turn the page, you will find action verbs or then verbs thinking processes. These words form the key of the assignment and also the exam paper. For example, when you are requested to analyze facts, you will have to present facts in detail. And when you have to outline, you have to only give an overview and present the main features. Make sure to know what is expected of you when these verbs are present in your assignment and exam paper. When you turn to Unit 1, you firstly find the table of content of this unit and then the learning outcomes. Learning outcomes are an indication of what content you will find in this specific unit. Learning activities, that's LA, follow the learning outcomes. In these learning activities you will find specific questions regarding the content of the specific unit. It will be wise to firstly try to answer these questions on your own and thereafter look at the answers which are at the end of each unit. 
when studying for the exa exams, use these questions to study because they form the core of the content and are very important. Do not forget to also study the assignment you completed because some of the questions will also be asked in the exams. You will notice that this presentation is presented for DPPE as well as DJPE students. Although the content of these two study guides are not 100% the same, both study guides are taken into account when marking the question papers so you will not be influenced neg negatively in any way regardless the course you follow. I mention this because some students were concerned that the two study guides differ in some ways. Study from the guide you received and be assured that all students are treated equally whether they are DPPE or DJPE students. Now I'm going to turn to Unit 1. Before we discuss the content of the study guide, you first should acquaint yourself what physiology and anatomy are. In 1.1, you find these descriptions. Physiology is the science of the functions of the human body. Physiology aims to understand the mechanisms of living. In other words, how living things work. Whereas anatomy describes the structure of living things. What the body, body parts look like their shape and where the parts of the body are located. In other words, where in the body they can be found. So if you clearly understand the difference, we can start discussing the content of Unit 1. The next point of interest is 1.3. How exercise promotes health and fitness. It controls weight. It combats health conditions and diseases. It improves mood, boosts energy, promotes better sleep, puts back, uh, puts back the spark into physical intimacy. And it can be fun. These are the benefits of exercise. Know these facts, but also how to describe each fact. 1.6 describes current health problems in young people. Currently some young people experience different kinds of health problems. Examples are malnutrition, that means not eating a healthy balanced meal every day. Also cardiovascular, that's heart diseases. AIDS, HIV are but some of the health problems experienced. Study 1.6 in detail to know the different problems experienced, but you should also be able to shortly discuss each problem as found here. For example, malnutrition means that a person eats the wrong kind of food or not enough and the body is therefore undernourished. I'm going to do a page to 1.9 uh, now, where the influences of physical education on emotional stability are discussed. In other words, how does physical education also contribute to the minds and emotions of the learners? Now in 1.9, one example is that it helps to reduce stress, meaning it helps with a mind, not a better body in this case. It improves self-confidence, which is also to do with thinking, not the body itself. It prevents cognitive decline, meaning the mind stays active in thinking and is well maintained. 
So you will notice all the points of interest have got to do with the mind now, in contrary to the advantages to the body. There are quite a few more positive influences discussed here, so study them all. The last part of interest in Unit 1 is Unit 1.11, where the value of jogging and walking are set out. This means specifically jogging and walking, not only PE in general. Surely it improves fitness and also endurance. It reduces body fat and lowers blood pressure, but specifically Walking does not require any training and practice. It comes naturally. So injuries are uncommon. You do not need special clothes or shoes, so it is an inexpensive exercise. Jogging is more intensive, so it burns more calories. It can be done on your own or in groups, and you can enjoy the outdoors for free. There are other advantages too, so study 1.11 extensively. We're going to look at the most important content of Unit 2 now. In 2.1, the three categories that movement skills can be divided into are discussed. The first category is locomotion. Locomotion concerns the movements where the body is transported in a horizontal or vertical direction, meaning parallel to the ground or upright, from one point in space to another. When you run, you move vertically upright from the starting line, that's a point in space, to the end, that's another point in space. Make sure to understand this concept. The next category is manipulation, where gross motor of the legs and arms movements involve giving force and also receiving force from objects. To explain this, when you hit a tennis ball, your arm muscles, that's gross motor movement, give force to the ball. And when you catch a ball, your arm muscles receive force. The last category is called stability. For this, let us think of a ballet dancer who dances on one place rotating. Turn around, but only on one place. So to use the correct terms, it is when the body remains in place, it does not go forward or backwards, but moves around its axis. Like the earth, when it rotates but stays at one place, moving around its axis. You should know these three categories, but also important, you should be able to explain what each one means and you should be able to give examples of each. The following content should only be studied in the DPP, uh, by DPPE students. So take note, the following content should only be studied by DPPE students. Remember that this presentation is for DPPE as well as DJPE students and the study guides are not exactly the same. So 2.2 in the DPPE study guide is about perceptual motor development components, namely body awareness, spatial awareness, directional awareness, and temporal awareness. Make sure to understand what each one entails, but you only need to study the names of these components.
So this page is only for DPPE students, while the next page is for DJPE students. DJPE students should study the following motor development components and more specifically the six components of motor skills related to fitness, namely agility, the ability to change directly, uh, direction quickly and easily, balance, coordination, power, reaction time and speed. These six components are also found in 2.2 but only in the DJPE study guide. Make sure to be able to name them all. That's only for DJPE students. So this page is only for the DJPE students. But the following pages, the rest of the content, should again be studied by both DPPE and DJPE students. 2.3 names the six phases of motor development. Very important. Make sure to know them all. The names correctly and the years associated to, uh, to each phase, but also to know what each one entails as described in 2.3. How will you know whether certain games are suitable for young learners? In 2.4, it is explained that suitable games for young children should provide for maximum participation. It should provide safe play. It should meet the needs of children with different abilities. Such a game should encourage effective movement. It should also enhance social status. There, there are a few other criteria in 2.4 and study them all. The following content of importance is that you should know what games for large groups are, like soccer, rugby, netball, etc. Also games for small groups, like do this, do that, and hopscotch. Games for pairs can be tennis, table tennis, squash, darts, etc. Then also tag and dodging games like chain tag, partner tag, etc. You should be able to name these different kinds of games, but also to identify a certain game. Meaning, if I name soccer, you should know that it is an example of games for large groups, etc. To find these facts, only the names of the games, you need not explain them, acquaint yourself with 2.5 to 2.8 in your study guide. 2.10 explains some traditional games. During a physical education class, it is good to play these kinds of games with your learners for them to acquaint themselves with games pl played by different cultures in your class. But to do this, you should know exactly how to play the game. Otherwise, it will be played wrongly and it will be of no use. I'm only going to explain one traditional game, namely Dilla e Kende, fill the bottle. A soft round ball, the size of a tennis ball, used by two teams who play the game in a circle, counting from zero. Now players from the opposing team first run from one circle to the other, while one of the same team must fill and empty a bottle in the middle of the court. 
Now, I suggest you play this game yourself, and then you can picture it in your mind in order to describe it correctly. In 2.11, the following content is important to study. How ball games can benefit learners. Learners balance and hand-eye coordination are improved by ball games. Social skills are developed. Motor skills are improved. Their self-confidence uh, confidence increases. They will also understand why it is important to do exercise. There are other benefits too. Study to know 2.11 in this regard. The last important content for Unit 2 we find in 2.12. What are the benefits of dance as practiced during a PE class? Can you think of some skills practiced during dancing? Um, I would say the most obvious are probably flexibility, range of mo motion, meaning the, uh, to be able to dance and move in different ways, physical, that's body strength, and stamina, in other words, to be able to dance for a long period without getting too tired. Another one is agility, the ability to change direction quickly and easily. There are other benefits too. Study them all as set out in 2.12. So when we turn to Unit 3, the first content of importance can be found in 3.1. A good playground should present opportunities to practice certain skills like coordination, balance, flexibility, strength, agility, etc. Study 3.1 in this regard. In 3.2, we find the features of a good playground. In other words, what types of playground characteristics are necessary to be a good, effective playground for learners? On the playground, there should be shade and shelter from the sun and the rain. There should be a water play area, not just water for drinking, but to play in water for the sensation and enjoyment. This does not mean a, swim, a swimming pool, but a trough full of water to play with boats and other play equipment. It should also have sand play area, meaning a sand pit on the playground, where they can build sand castles feel dry and wet sand, and be creative. Again, it is not a specific sand, it is, sorry, a specific sand box, big enough for several learners to play in, ideally covered with a roof to prevent sunburn. This does not mean it is the whole sandy area of the playground but only a sand pit. A small garden area where seeds can be planted so that learners can watch them grow and also learn to water plants is essential for a good playground. Study the importance of having a garden on the playground too. Grass is also essential. It will not cover the whole playground. It is only a designated area on the playground. Here they can skip, hop and play soccer and other activities. But there should also be a hard surface area which is paved or bricked where ball games can be played. Murals are also important. A mural is a wall where learners can paint and write on. A good idea is to cover the wall with blackboard paint to write on. Playground markings and where learners can play hopscotch, there can be a mini road where they can ride their play cars 
and bikes and so forth. The last feature is tractor tires, which they can roll and climb on and through. Study 3.2 in detail for this important aspect. So let us look at big play equipment on the playground. It should be able to develop the uh, big muscles. It should develop coordination and balance, etc. What are the suitable equipment then? Climbing structures like a jum jungle gym, which develop their balance, coordination and large, large muscles. If you are uncertain what a jum jungle gym is, make sure to acquaint yourself with this. A proposal is to Google Jungle Gym images to find out exactly what it entails. There should be slides and swings, a horizontal bar, a wooden bar in the shape of a rectangle to balance and climb on. There should be tunnels and trampolines which are also suitable to enhance certain skills. Study 3.3 in this regard. The following are important content in Unit 4. In 4.2, it is discussed how a teacher can effectively manage a PE class. PE is more informal and it can easily encourage learners to challenge the discipline of a teacher. So how can a physical education teacher then manage such a class, preventing ill discipline. In 4.2, certain tips in this regard are discussed, like to use positive reinforcement, to structure classes that foster success, don't let learners choose their teams, don't make PE classes about winning, these are but a few proposals to ensure good discipline. So study 4.2 in detail to know what and how to do to ensure that the PE class is presented effectively and successfully. Also study the headings regarding supervision, equipment and rules as found in 4.2 so that you can discuss these headings, that is supervision, equipment and rules. Safety on a playground is of utmost importance. Therefore, the following are very important. Enough supervisors for the number of learners. Written playground rules to be discussed and followed by learners. Equipment on the playground should be checked regularly and well maintained to find out to find out all the safety features study 4.4 extensively the last paragraph of importance in unit 4 is 4.5 what will you do in case an accident did happen on the playground in spite of all the precautions taken Make sure to study 4.5 in this regard. It is also discussed in Learning Activity 5 in the DPPE Study Guide and Learning Activity 3 in the DJPE Study Guide. So, let's go to Unit 5. Unit 5 is about suitable indoor and outdoor play areas. But before we look at these, we first need to look at the different categories of play namely unoccupied play, where newborns and infants are not actually playing at all. Solitary or independent play happens when a child plays alone. Onlooker play is what the word says. They simply observe other ch uh, children play and not pa uh, partake during play. Parallel play happens at about the age of three years and is when they have fun but play side by side in their own little world. Associative play follows at the next level 
when they are involved with what others are doing, but they are playing separately. Like when they play, uh, build blo uh, blocks together, but each one builds their own construction. The last play is cooperative play. When they start playing together, they cooperate. Note that these categories follow on one another. So a child's life starts with unoccupied play and develop up to cooperative play. Study to know these well in 5.1. 5.2 is important and contains criteria that suitable indoor areas must meet. These are the area in the classroom. It should be predictable. Learners should know where things belong and also where they can participate in their activities. This is because indoor areas are fairly small, not like outdoors, where they can run around and play more free freely. These indoor areas should have well-defined boundaries. There are quite a few more criteria. Study to know them all. What do you think should every playground that's outside the outdoor area need in order to be effective and also safe? Uh, like it, uh, explained in 5.3, here are a few. A fence should be around the playground. The playground must be free of weeds and it must be clean and well maintained. Grass areas must be free of thorns and must have hard and soft areas to meet all the learners' play needs. There are many more important facts regarding an effective playground outside, which allows learners to explore and to play on a safe play playground. Study therefore this as set out in 5.3. To find out what indoor play activities can be presented in the classroom, page to 5.4 in this regard, and study the indoor play activities for pre-primary learners and for primary school learners as discussed here. The last unit to study is Unit 6. In 6.1, it is discussed why sport builds character and an athlete should have the following characteristics to achieve the results they aim for. Sport plays a very important role in building physical endurance. It allows athletes to develop goal setting in order to achieve their goals. Moral habits, like not taking or giving bribes, are reinforced. Also, concentration, confidence, control and commitment are developed when partaking in sport. Study to know the headings, but also what each one entails in 6.1. A coach should be able to teach athletes certain techniques like the on your marks command in a race, the get set command in a race, and the go command. You have to study these three techniques in detail to teach them 100% correctly to your athletes. So make sure to study and know them as set out in 6.5. Good sportsmanship is a characteristic which should be reinforced by a coach. What would you say? If a coach questions the decisions of a referee and goes on the field to query them, will this be good or bad sportsmanship? 6.8 says that the results should be accepted with grace, meaning to accept if you lose a game and not to blame others or the referee. Also, to congratulate competitors after a game, even if lost. 
see and study 6.8 in this regard. There are many other tips and when stu you are studying these tips, you will get to know when is sportsmanship good and when is it bad. 6.9 touches a very important topic, namely the qualities of a good coach. Many people can coach, but to be a good coach requires certain qualities. Study this extensively in 6.9. Also page to the LA in this regard at the end of the unit. It does happen that a school principal can expect from a PE teacher to plan, to organize and help with the execution of a school athletics or sports event. Can you think about important issues to organize in order to make it a successful event? Let us start from the beginning. You need the athletes' names and ages in order to divide them in the appropriate groups and also the items you are going to present. You need helpers, the starter, catchers at the end of the race, the recorders of the winners, etc. There should be an announcer, there should be clean toilet facilities, food and cool drinks. Parents should be informed exactly when and where the event will, will take place. So you need to determine the venue, the starting time, and very important, with the consent of the principal. I'm sure you will realize that there are many aspects to give attention to. Therefore, study 6.10 to know these aspects well. You can also study LA7 for DPPE students and LA5 for DJPE students at the end of Unit 6 in this regard. You will notice that the LAs, the learning activities, play a big role in studying, so make use of them while studying. While studying each unit, make sure to first read the LA questions found at the beginning of each unit in order to find out whether they are applicable to the content of this presentation. If so, this will help you to better understand the work. And many times, they are a summary of the content discussed in the unit. In that way, it will help you with your studies. This then concludes the discussion of the most important content of your study guide. Please feel free to contact me should you have any questions or uncertainties. Please note that you only need to study your study guide for these exams. Before you study the actual content, you first need to acquaint yourself with the learning outcomes of each unit. These learning outcomes form the core of your studies and guide you through the content and can be found at the beginning of each unit. After you've studied this, you will know what the unit is all about. And thereafter, you must look at the learning activities which follow the learning outcomes. It will be wise to do all these activities to the best of your ability before looking at the answers at the end of each unit. After you've completed them, you can go back to the answers at the end of the unit and measure your knowledge against the complete answers. In this way, you will get to know the content and you will also know how questions can be asked in the exams. The study guide contains adequate information and facts. It is not necessary to study from any other source for the exams. Remember to also study your assignment for the exams. Remember that when answering a question, facts from different parts of the study guide can be applicable. It is not necessarily limited to one part of the guide. It is important to note that Although physical and health education may seem as a non-exam subject for learners and a period where learners are encouraged to explore in a less formal environment,
You as teachers should exactly know how to keep them busy and how and why certain activities should be presented. Therefore, the teacher should know certain facts about the subject PHE as well as the correct procedures regarding the presentation of PHE. It is therefore of utmost importance that you as student teachers should know facts regarding the subject. I stress this because some students are of the opinion that this subject does not need to be studied for and then they do poorly in the exams. Take time to know your study guide in order to present adequate facts during the exams. Now I'm just going to, in completion, just to give a few hints for the exams. Write neatly and legibly. You may use blue or black pen. Please do not even consider being dishonest. If find out, you will receive a zero for the question paper. You may not leave the exam room before 30 minutes have expired. And if you do leave, you may not come back to continue answering the question paper. You may not leave the exam venue during the last 15 minutes of the exams. Remember to sign the checklist. No smoking or eating is allowed in the room. Only paper provided by the invigilator will be accepted. So if you need more paper to answer questions, ask them to provide you with paper. If you turn up 30 minutes after the exams have started, you will not be allowed to write and this will result in no turn up. Make sure to know what is expected of you when the question is asked. Read through the action verbs at the beginning of the study guide. For example, define means you have to give the precise brief meaning of something and describe means you have to give detail features of an issue. Please take note that short answer questions will be asked and the following kinds can be asked. To fill in words, for example, uh, what is used to, uh, during relay races? The correct answer to be filled in is then baton. Definitions of certain terminology can be asked, for example, the definition of strength the ability of the body to exert a maximum force against the force external to the body. So you have to know definitions. Short descriptions of functions of a body part, for example, or uh, of certain types of ex uh, exercises. Another type of short question can be where two columns are given, column A and column B. In column A, Certain facts are given, like an international health problem, speed, chocolates and sweet. In column B, the possible answers can be not a healthy option to eat, HIV, the ability to move from one place to another in the shortest time possible. So you have to combine the facts of column A with column B. Do you know the answers? Have a look. The answers are 1B, 2C, 3A. You only fill in the correct letters. Do not write out the words. Please feel free to contact me regarding any uncertainties and questions you have about your subject. Good luck with the exams. And you will be rewarded for hard work and dedication.